Nicola Mann from Parentland Plus and welcome to Goss Teenager TV. I'm here with Susie Heyman, parenting expert. Welcome Susie. Hello Nick, thank you. Yes, I'm um, a trustee of Parentland Plus um, and an agony aunt as well. And we've been looking at the boards, haven't we? We Nick, have. To see some of the queries and we're, we're, we're looking at sex at the moment. We right? are, and specifically yeah. the issue of pregnancy, teenage yes. pregnancy. So mm. what would you say to a parent or carer out there, um, teenage son or daughter has come back and said there's a pregnancy? Yes. What, do you, what do you say to them? <laughs> Don't panic for a start. Um, and I think it's quite important not to get into blame and responsibility. And of course, so often I hear from people where they're saying, my, my, you know, my daughter's got pregnant and it's the boyfriend's fault. Or my, my son's um, got, got a girl pregnant and it must be her fault. The slut, you know. mm. I think you have to actually talk in terms of personal responsibility and recognise that it's not about blame. That's not the point. What you're thinking about here at this point is how can we make this situation better? Um, how can we make it not, as it were, I'd say a tragedy, that's a bit strong, isn't mm. it? But how can we make it not a real problem? We need to find a solution for it. So the first thing to do, deep breath, don't panic, sit down and talk. And, and what do you talk about? Is it talking about the options that are available? I think you have to do that. Um, I mean, obviously you may have very, very strong feelings one way or the other. Mm. Um, important to talk to your teenager about what they feel. And the, the issue is, I think sometimes, you know, we, we have this very strong feeling if, if, if there is a pregnancy, if the pregnancy goes ahead and perhaps they're coming up to doing A-levels or whatever or university, it's going to ruin their life if they had a baby. The sad thing is that sometimes if you railroad teenagers into having abortions when they really don't want one, the likelihood is, is they'll go out and have another pregnancy because they're expressing a need. Now, you can obviously talk in terms of, of this need, and if it's um, realistic, and if they can manage, and that's a conversation that needs to be had. But I think you have, it's very important that you are supporting the young person in what they feel is right, even if you might, possibly rightly, mm -hmm. think that you have a greater appreciation of what the consequences are going to be than they do. But it's very important sometimes to get help on this, so it's mm -hmm. not just you on your own. Obviously, come across a teenager, talk to other parents, that can really help. Um, and maybe ring us and talk to us about you know, where, where locally there is help available. But there is lots of help available. Either way, whether the baby is going to be kept, well, three ways actually, baby is going to be kept, baby is going to be adopted, or there's going to be an abortion. But don't forget with abortions, you have to really act very, very quickly. But actually with pregnancy, you need to act very quickly because the young person who's pregnant needs to be in the health system to make sure that their health is upheld during their pregnancy, if that's what they're going to do. So as a parent, how do you go about supporting your, your daughter or son? What, what mm. is there out there to, mm. to help you support them? Well, there is certainly plenty of help. I mean, on the medical side, if we're, if, if we're going for, through keeping the baby, mm. um, there's obviously the whole medical system that is around um, supporting young people through a pregnancy and beyond, and that you need to access, primarily originally through your own GP. Um, and again, actually, if you're going for an abortion, that's probably the first place to stop as well. Uh, young people on their own may go to a, a young people's clinic, something like Brooke, but if they've come to the family, they're part of the family, then it is the GP who would help. As long as the GP is supportive, sometimes there are still some GPs who might drag their feet because they're not in favour of abortion. So it's very important maybe to ask the question, if that's what you're going for, um, you know, uh, do you have, you actually ask the GP, do you have any particular beliefs against abortion, mm. so that you know, you know, right from the start, whether they're going to be quick on their draw, as it were, or not. Um, but then, you know, you are looking at getting into the system, but I think it's also very, very worthwhile thinking in terms of counselling before and after, again, ask the GP for counselling support for all of you, um, and also to make sure after all this doesn't happen again, um, and sometimes... I think if, if it's a really unpleasant experience, young people may come out of it thinking, I don't want to think about it, I'm never going to do that again, I don't want to think about it, and because they're not thinking about that, they're not thinking about contraception, and they're going full pregnant again. So the support, I think, needs to be as little about blame, and far more about, okay, this has happened, how are we going to find the solution?